Today I'm going to be talking about the Colosseum that is located in Rome, Italy. I'm going to be talking about what was the Colosseum, what did the Colosseum hold, and what kind of architecture was used to make the Colosseum. At the time, the Colosseum was the greatest of its time. Rome was the heart of the Roman Empire, stretching from Britain in the west to Syria in the east, allowing it to be the most powerful empire in the ancient world. If there was one thing that the Roman people loved, it was a spectacle and the opportunity of escapism offered by weird and wonderful public shows, which assaulted the senses and ratcheted up the emotions. Roman rulers knew that this would catch the citizens' attention. It would increase their popularity and prestige with the people they put on lavish and spectacular shows in purpose-built venues across the empire. First, I'm going to talk about Nero, who was the last Roman emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. His reign lasted from October 13th, A.D. 54 to June 9th, A.D. 68, 13 years and 8 months. During Nero's reign, he raised taxes on the Roman citizens, and that money went to the construction of a palace in the heart of Rome, completed with a 36-meter bronze statue of himself. Because of the huge tax raise, citizens of Rome revolted against their emperor, and Nero then became an enemy of the state, resulting in an execution. But instead of being executed, Nero just committed suicide. After Nero's death, Vespasian came into rule. He was the Roman emperor from 69 to 79 AD, the fourth and the last in the year of the four emperors. He found the Flavian dynasty that ruled the empire for 27 years. The reason why Vespasian came into rule was because he was known for his military success in the Roman invasion of Britain in 43. And he was subjugated to Judea during the Jewish rebellion of 66. He helped build the wall to prevent the Jewish people from coming over and attacking Rome. Like I said, Vespasian became Roman Emperor in 69 AD. After Emperor Nero's suicide, a year of civil unrest followed. As Rome's new empire, the key to Vespasian's success as ruler would be stability. In other words, he needed to avoid uprisings by ensuring that his subjects were content. Vespasian was short on money due to the successful quelling of the revolt in Judea. He believed that if he built a massive stadium to host the gladiatorial games, the public would be on his side. So with that being said, he ordered the construction of the Flavian Amphitheater in 72 AD. Nowadays, we call it the Colosseum. We don't exactly know who the architects were for the Roman Colosseum, or the number of people involved in the construction. We just know that tens of thousands of slaves were involved in, the, in building such a massive structure. Also, prisoners of war were used to help build this Colosseum. What we do know is that the Colosseum took eight years to build. The Colosseum was made of and constructed of concrete, brick, and travertine stone. And the amphitheater is 2,000 years old and still going strong. The elliptical architecture of the amphitheater is meant to facilitate visibility from every seat in the arena. The exterior facade of the Colosseum consists of four levels, with the bottom three levels composed of 80 arches each. Structurally speaking, the arches make possibly the immense size of the structure. Aesthetically, the arches lighten the visual aspect of the bulk of the massive building. But they function as numerous triumphal arches, reflecting the fact that the Colosseum was built from the spoils of the Judea. And within the Colosseum, those four levels that are visible from the outside provide huge amounts of spectator seating. Contemporary estimates claim that the Colosseum could seat up about to 87,000 people, though modern, more conservative estimates put that number closer to about 50,000. Spectators were seated based upon their social status, with the most elite viewers closest to the arena and the lower class citizens higher up. The vaulting within the arena was crucial, not only for the structural integrity of the building, but also to provide easy access and free circulation for the spectators. From the time when spectators entered the arena to the corridors, they could take their seats. To the seats themselves, spectators were filtered based upon their social status as well. Spectators were not free to walk anywhere they wanted, but they were carefully funneled throughout the structure based on their social status. This segregation was so complete that the corridor systems made it impossible for senators and equestrians to run into each other, and it was possible for plebs only to meet other plebs. The Colosseum's architecture also boasted several notable engineering features, one such, the Vela, which was a canvas awning that covered the audience, protecting them from the sun as they watched the games. What you want to know is what the Colosseum was used for. 
Many think it was used just for gladiatorial contests, and yes, it was. But these contests took on many forms, from animal hunts, to group battles, to one-on-one -on -one competitions. In addition, the arena witnessed public executions. Trained for years in Ludus, which were gladiatorial schools, these fighters duked it out for entertainment of the Roman citizens. While it seems cruel to our modern minds, gladiators were worshipped as idols. As a testament to their popularity, the games went on for over 300 years. During the games, gifts were offered to the spectators. Small balls or tablets with the image of the gift stamped on it were thrown to the public. One could win food, a slave, or even a house or a ship. And then there was a sparsio. To refresh the people, petals of flower perfumes were thrown from above as well. For the Romans, the games weren't just a moment of leisure, but were also an occasion in which people, institutions, and the powers congregated. Roman society was always divided into classes, and this separation was observed also on occasion for the games. However, in the arena that developed in Rome, the amphitheater became the place where the common folks could meet upper class. Networking was a very valuable thing of the Colosseum. In the arena, common folks could meet upper class, the emperor, and sometimes even address them directly. The Colosseum was a place where people could build connection and not only entertainment, the legacy that the Colosseum leaves behind is unforgettable and will always be a part of our history. The grueling actions and mindsets that our ancestors had were so much more different than today's. Also, architecture that was built 2,000 years ago gave and showed us technique that could be used for modern day architecture, knowing that we can trust the stability of the design and not worry about breakage or anything.